This is a free sample of the book, Benefit from Your Breakup, by Cairo Copeland. First half of this book is posted right here on YouTube, free for everyone to listen to. If you like this content and want to hear or read the rest, or want to listen to it free of ads, visit reinventideal.com slash breakup. The book is available on Kindle, paperback, and audible at reinventideal.com slash breakup. Chapter 4. Why getting back with her will ruin your life. Erasing her from your mind the same way she does with you will not come easily. Something deep within you is bringing about resistance to expunging her from your heart every step of the way. But what is it? What is the real enemy and culprit to your recovery? Your real enemy is not despair, but hope. Starting with the breakup itself, when it occurred, it hits like a shock that convinces you that you're living in an alternate reality. You see it so explicitly with the deep disconnections displayed by others who go on about their business like nothing happened. But you cannot do the same because within, your thoughts and feelings are being devastated as your romantic heart has been mutilated. Worse yet, Everyone expects you to just continue business as usual and pretend the hell inside your heart is non-existent. But what is perhaps most terrorizing to one's feelings is the fact that this pain is perpetually force-fed down their throat. Losing the person you love because they died is hard, yes. But you have no choice to accept it because there is no hope or chance that they could ever come back. However, when they've dumped you, the pain you're in because of them can be ended by them at any time. They hold the immediate magic pill to fix the way you feel, but they choose not to. They choose to let your suffering continue, like if you were dying on the sidewalk and they walk right past you, even step on you without noticing, then scrape the bottom of their shoes off after. A deeper cause to all this emotional mayhem that is always unacknowledged in the cliched advice you receive from others post-breakup. We are neurologically hardwired to bond with others, and once a bond is made, the mind will do everything it can to maintain it. The withdrawal and its effects are no different from that of a drug. Lacking a cause of dopamine rushes that you were used to getting will drive anyone to the edge. To replicate this mayhem on your mind, try quitting smoking, drinking, or pornography cold turkey. It was of vital importance for Jason to realize that this is where his pain was germinating from, neurology. Without this knowledge, he was left to believe that the true cause of his pain was that his soulmate had rejected him because he was unlovable. But these thoughts are merely stories that the mind tells itself as a result of withdrawals from a chemical addiction that the other person sparked. You must remind yourself of this when these withdrawals and their resulting negative thoughts attack you as well. Worse yet, the hope in the possibility of getting her back was also at play in causing his pain. This set him up for a no-win scenario, that the only way he could heal is if something so unlikely to happen were to happen. Contrary to what's beneficial and logical, our minds are not made to make us happy or successful. They're made to keep things as they are to maintain comfort zones. Even when we're miserable, the mind fights hard to keep us in that misery. So it establishes this impossible standard that the only way to cure this misery is to get back together with her. Further, within my client was a growing fear that this soulmate, Katie, was to be his last and best chance to have the love of a woman. Something all guys dream of. The fear was worsened by the fact that being publicly committed to her left him no other options to fall back on. Being out of the dating market for so long, he didn't believe there were better options out there for him. The real fear was that if he were to end up with another, he'd be settling for someone far less attractive and compatible as Katie. And the whole time he'd be in a relationship with this replacement, he'd wish he was still with Katie. She managed to ruin his next relationship before he even got into it. At the root of his fear was hope. The road to hell is hatched by high hopes. What truly makes it difficult to let go is in the guilt, fear, and anxiety of cutting the cord permanently. When the decision is made to expunge your ex from your mind and your life, you are letting go of something that is far more beautiful and precious than she ever could be. And that 
is the hope of reuniting the fantasy of undoing the disaster that must be dropped. It is no different from when you have a crush on a female friend but are too afraid to make a move. What is paralyzing you from pursuing her romantically is that if she doesn't feel the same way, the hope of having her is crushed. That hope you have is something very beautiful, perhaps the most sentimental that men can get. The hope that one day she'll realize that the best guy for her was you all along, right under her nose. A mythic trope that has been burned into our collective conscious by shows like The Big Bang Theory. When the beautiful Penny realizes that the nerdy, nice guy Leonard was the best man for her all along. This exists only in the world of fiction. It is the work of fiction writers as an escape from the real world, because the real world is not like that. The hope may cause you to act out. It manipulates you. It fools you into thinking that desperate, frightening actions will be received as romantic gestures. Your mind is tricked into believing that some cryptic, so cryptic social media post will be read by her and analyzed for deeper meaning, when in reality she only scrolls right past it. There have even been cases of guys that went past the point of no return acting on this hope, resulting in them being issued restraining orders, charged with stalking, and even incarcerated. Society convinces you that these strong feelings of yours are not normal, and you are losing it. You must stop hoping for her to rethink her decision and get back together with you. Whether it is a realistic possibility or not, all thought of it coming true must be abandoned. Hanging on to this is the single strongest obstacle to your recovery. That hope is something we so desperately cling to, but for a remedy to the pain caused by this hope, remember Batman and Bane in The Dark Knight Rises. Halfway through the movie, Bane has captured Bruce Wayne slash Batman and puts him in a prison that is a deep pit in the ground. It is possible to climb out of it, but it is extremely difficult. The light from the top of the pit is the only light this prison has. Bane explains to Batman that this was intentionally chosen to heighten the despair he wants him to feel. The torture he would endure would not be of his body, but of his soul. As Bane is looking up at the entry to the pit, he says, There's a reason why this prison is the worst hell on earth. Hope. Every man who has rotted here over centuries has looked up to the light and imagined climbing to freedom. Oh, easy. So simple. I like shipwrecked men returning to seawater from uncontrollable thirst. Many have died trying. There can be no true despair without hope. To get over this hope, you must realize that even if you did get back together with her, life would not be better. In fact, it would be a lot worse the second time around than it was the first. Let's dismantle this hope by first dismantling the myth that getting back together will lead to anything good at all. Reunion. Many guys think the second time around will be better because the two of you will have been through a lot and become stronger to weather anything. Because after all, you just weathered a breakup. If you can overcome this one, it would take something monumentally greater to break you up again. This myth has its origins in our blue pill conditioning. The idea behind it is that the man is always wrong and would do best for him to admit that to the woman. She would reward him with reunion. The fact of the matter is that it is always far better for you to go looking for new potential partners than it ever is to get back together with a previous one. The real growth and developing strength of character comes from starting from scratch again. Once you know you can lose a woman but find another shortly after, you are better able to keep the frame and tolerate a lot less bitchy behavior from her. More so when you know you can always find better. This myth that a reunion is an ideal end to the story persists because it is an easy lie to believe. It speaks directly to the certainty hunger we all crave. The same hunger fuels our desire to avoid risks, especially when it comes to rejection. To go looking for new potential partners is to risk rejection, and the results are highly uncertain. Letting this motive rule your life will give you, will give it the keys to ruin it. Anything that serves as a shield against rejection is often bad for you. Reuniting with an ex is more than just a rejection-avoidant tactic. It's also an acceptance of defeat. 
It tells your mind that you're okay with settling and that you don't deserve better. The blue pill way is supposedly less risky as it often has you taken the easier path. But in truth, giving in to this temptation is letting the work avoidance motive win the day. Because post-breakup, you have work to do. Whether it was you or her that did the dumping, she'll never get over the fact that you were so without other options to the point where you went crawling back to her. What you can expect is to receive much less respect from her as a result. You must re-examine your feelings about them and ask yourself, if I take them back, what do I expect will be better the second time around? If you cannot present a case to yourself in specific terms as to how it will be different this time, what are you doing? You're repeating the exact same thing again and expecting a different result. Perhaps the breakup was your fault and you were the one that was abandoned. So you figured you'll work on yourself and turn over a new leaf. Many guys are more than willing to do that. And while doing so, they believe they are becoming better men. But they are deluding themselves because in meeting the new terms of the renegotiated relationship, they are reverting to their blue pill conditioning. A genuinely beneficial relationship is established on true mutual desire. Never does one arise from agreeing to a list of negotiations and responsibilities. Relationship reboots require these by their very nature, but true desire can never be negotiated, let alone renegotiated. Think back to when you first met this person. What drove you to pursue them? A burning desire that spoke to you from your blood to your bones that you just had to get closer to this person. A similar feeling was also at play in their minds as well. But now, post-breakup, that initial arousal and attraction cannot be recreated. It is a sensation you cannot stage that occurs in the part of our psyche you cannot trick. However, you can evoke it in someone new and fresh. The scarcity mindset that this one person you were with was the best you could have had. The fear of missing out is one of the tools used by the demon possessing you. Torturing your mind and even making you feel physical pain, this demon whispers lies in your ears that you blew it with your one best chance. The soulmate myth and one itis return with a vengeance. You must make no effort nor attempt to reunite. You will only humiliate yourself if you do. These feelings and internal pressures to act are unique to you, but she does not feel the same. Not one bit. For the guy that attempts to go back to her will be humbled, and even if she obliges him, he will never have her full respect again. It will never leave her mind that he was so void of other options that his only choice was to beg her for a second chance. Always seek out a fresh start instead. When you start over with someone brand new, it gives you a chance to use what you've learned from your past relationship. When the search is restarted, you have a more specific idea of what you do and don't want, what you will and won't accept. Your next relationship with someone new is already bound to be better because you're less likely to settle for something similar to what you had just lost. With a new person, you get more experience with different kinds of women, and as a result, get better overall with women. That's one mindset to always have, that getting better with women in general is more important than getting better with one specific woman. Further, never forget that as you age, your value and appeal to other women only goes up. Your exes value and appeal to other guys is on a daily decline. You will end up getting the better end of the deal. It's her loss just from the natural progression of time. Confidence comes from having options. This is one option that even the most monogamous of men can have. The option of not needing the relationship to continue because he can get another soon after it should end. Never hope to rekindle a past relationship but rather hope to become so good with women that you wouldn't even consider it. After taking a shower, don't put the same shitty clothes back on. The hope of getting back together with her, the chance and the mere existence of such a chance, is what's killing you. To rise above it, you must let go of that hope. To let go of that hope, you must hope for something greater, that your life will be much better without her. And that hope is one you can actually plan for and realize. Let that hope be the one that drives you wakes you up in the morning, and pushes you to not only move on, but also move up. Main Takeaway To extinguish the hope of reunion, imagine to yourself some of the most conflict-riddled times you've had with your ex. Think of everything from the smallest issue, like a difference of opinion, to the larger ones like long-term plans. Now imagine butting heads with her on these the second time around. 
but this time lacking her respect. Because that's exactly what it would look like. What's more important than having a woman's love is having her respect. Women do not love men they do not respect. They are also not at all aroused or turned on by men they do not respect. Any sex she may have with such a guy is transactional only, not sex that she enjoys, and thereby, not sex that you'd enjoy. Thank you for listening to this free sample of the book Benefit from Your Breakup by Cairo Copeland. If you enjoyed it and want to hear or read the rest, or want to listen to it free of ads, visit reinventideal.com slash breakup. The book is available on Kindle, paperback, and Audible at reinventideal.com slash breakup.